Just over five years ago, Dan Leo made a choice to seek help and overcome his drinking problem. Now, Dan, also known as Jersey Sober Walker, uses his social media presence to promote the benefits of sobriety and the growing community of islanders embracing it. His journey also saw him team up with another alcohol-free influencer known as Sober Joe, and more recently coordinate I'm Glad You Exist Walk and Talk events, promoting the positive mental health message, brand and podcast of the same name. I started by asking him when and how his journey with sobriety began. I woke up one morning on the 11th of February 2019 and uh, and I didn't want to feel like I did. Um, I didn't like who I'd probably become over the years of alcohol abuse. Um, so I decided to do something about it. And what was the next step? Yeah, so I referred myself to my GP <clears throat> and... Uh, you know when they when you go to the GP and they ask you how many units of alcohol you drink a week and if people are like me you lie um, and so they don't necessarily think you've got a problem but this time I just had to open up and be honest with myself and with them and uh, and ask for help I just needed it I, I came to that crux where I didn't want to feel like that anymore that's quite a difficult conversation I imagine to have yeah. was it friends kind of supporting you to go see your GP or was it just completely personal choice completely and lastly my choice um, I knew I had a problem with drinking I drank every day um, and not necessarily down the pub but at, at home um, so most mornings I would wake up and think you know that's it I, I'm not going to drink today um, but ultimately um, circumstances during the day work personal life just made me drink so I woke up on that particular day and I didn't go to work and I thought to myself right I've not taken a day off for a long 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 time um from being hung over um I'll be honest um so I thought I'm going to go and do something about it this is the time I, I actually think I'd, I didn't hit the rock bottom that people talk about that makes you decide to go and do something about um an addiction I I just decided time this was the time. I was 41 and yeah, I just went to the doctors and they referred me to uh, drug and alcohol services. Five years on, talk me through the process once you are referred and, and the techniques you used to actually okay, come so, sober. Yeah, absolutely. So I went through drug and al alcohol services. They spoke to me about um, how many sort of units of alcohol um, I drank and how much I drank. Um, they gave me a chart to fill in. Um, I was off the charts, absolutely just off the charts. Um, they uh, wanted to prescribe me some um, some some drugs to um, suppress the uh, the need or the want for alcohol, um, which I did not take because I just don't like taking taking pills. Even if I've got a headache, I'd rather just drink some water and go to bed. Um, so I didn't particularly like that approach. Um, it's not for me. Um, so I decided to go cold turkey a tough approach very much very yeah. much a tough approach and some very very dark moments in the early few months which I got through um, because I opened up at work um, some people will think uh, work is not probably the best place to discuss if you've got any issues um, but I will tell anyone that's listening to this HR your your line manager everyone will be sympathetic to the needs. Um, so I spoke to um, my HR and, uh, and my line manager, told them about the struggles that I was going through, and they took it upon themselves to um, check on me weekly. We had weekly meetings, see how I was going on, um, and that just really helped. So I just thought, all right, first of all, I spoke to my GP. I spoke to my GP. I wasn't referred. I wasn't told to. I opened up. So from there, I found that opening up to individuals wasn't scary. It was needed, and it's exactly what I needed. So just a, a, an ear to be able to talk through some of the struggles that I was actually going through. Uh, opening up to people certainly increased your, your odds of staying sober and, and not relapsing? Yep, yeah, yeah, certainly did. Because they were holding you accountable, or just because it was that being able to share your yeah, journey? Yeah, I think I was holding 
myself accountable um, mm -hmm. more than others going, oh, he's going to slip up, you know, we'll just wait for it, you know. I think I was just holding myself accountable. I was still going into the pub on a Friday and a Sunday because I'm part of a, a thrift club in St. Peter's. So I just kept on going through um, and people go, oh, you're still not drinking? Go, no, no, I'm still not drinking. Until it got very oh, just annoying that people go, oh, you, you know, you're not drinking again. Or, you know, what's wrong with you? So I'll be totally honest, I just, I just told them, I was going, look, I'm an alcoholic and I'm just not drinking at the moment. And that would stop the conversation in its tracks. You know, I wouldn't have to try and make an excuse or anything like that. So I just went, look, I'm just going to be honest. If I have to be honest with myself, I've got to be honest with other people. The actual respect I got from people was amazing. Um, and some of them, it was like I was even like turning a mirror to them and they were looking at their own sort of like drinking habits. Um, and this was predominantly in the pub. When did Jersey Sober Walker start to become part of that journey? Um, so with sobriety, some of the hard family decisions had to be made to get myself into um, a better space and move away from potentially triggering situations um so when i started to live by myself um i found myself out at st Wands, and i just decided that was about 18 months 19 months into my sobriety and i found like there's nothing to do in st Wands. um let's go for a walk so i just put my headphones on listen to music and go for a walk it would be maybe you know a two mile walk to start off with and then it just got longer and longer until it was about 10k and I just found a passion for for walking and I found um, I was losing weight um, over the whole five years of okay I've put a little bit back on now but um, at the height of it, it was about four stone that I had lost which was good just through walking and uh, and just finding just finding something else to do in the evenings with that social media presence for those who don't know Josie Soberwalk obviously you're promoting your journey uh, places like Instagram is a good example Correct. was that wanting to inspire other people maybe even get them to shift their own lifestyle choices towards sobriety absolutely so with um, with Sober Joe um, we formed a uh, formed a, a, a massive bond basically of knowing that we could change the perception of sobriety um, within Jersey Um Sober Joe organises a lot of events, um, like a boat party last year, a beach party the year before. We have um, sober Christmas parties um, and everything like that. We're just trying to change the dynamic of um, sobriety in, in Jersey and trying to make it not sound boring because it's far from it. You know, you find yourself the clarity that you get through being sober um, and not running away from problems. Um, I had to hit some pretty hard conversations head on um which i wasn't used to doing at all um so jersey sober walker came around from that i changed my instagram handle i started posting more and more um about uh the sobriety journey because i was finding a lot of benefit and a lot of engagement i suppose from people all, all around the world um within the sobriety uh, community um around the world i've done various things for sobriety um last year uh, 2023 i was mr april in the um sober is sexy calendar fantastic yeah i know that was a uh, that was definitely out of my comfort zone and probably out of my little brother's comfort zone as well who took the photos um but the photos were taken in the pub um and everything around me was alcohol free uh, and, and it was really good it was professionally done and we raised like two and a half thousand pound for um alcohol change uk um, I did a, a skydive last year, just really trying to find who I am. Um, after five years, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm liking who I am again. And I like that you use the word community because I know you've obviously done the uh, walk last year, which was to mark four years yep. being sober. Uh, you did it again recently for, yes, for the fifth year anniversary. Do you think it's something that it's about spreading a message or just getting people involved? So for, for me, it's about getting people or alternatives to going to the pub. So walking. I find a great benefit. People talk to me about, you know, yeah, they go walking, go walking with a dog, walking with their children, walking various bits and pieces. I like walking by myself with my headphones on, a bit of self-reflection time, um, contemplation time especially. And what would you say the main benefits are? Because uh, I know it's something certainly on the walks you like to kind of explain to people that 
it, it's not just about recovery it can also just be a, a chance to improve yourself personally oh, and, and why would you say it's a good decision for anyone for anyone to um to give up drinking for a certain period of, of time you will notice a difference almost instantly um the the thought process the clarity that you have when thinking about things i don't overreact instantly to uh, a conversation anymore i i think about it first before i react or um or talk back to the individual where before i would have just instantly gone defensive mode <clears throat> i'm i'm a lot more empathetic to people's situations not just my own but to everything really around me so doing these walks having these sober meetups having a mindful community um so myself and joe started a mindful meetup facebook group um so it's not just about walking it's about just mindful people coming together and building a community and you know for the walk on the 11th of february we had about 40 people come in and out of the um the various times of the walk and we did the uh, lay by one to um corbier and I thought this time I'm going to... So last year was for my four-year sobriety, but also the mental health message, I'm glad you exist. So when you speak to somebody, um, they could be having a bit of a hard time and just those four words can be so powerful and it could change the whole perception of how they're feeling and how they want to feel in the future, really. And that message, which uh, there's also a podcast, the IGYE podcast. There is, yes. So is that now closely linked to what you're doing with Jersey Sober Walker and your personal journey? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So the I'm glad you exist mantra is is right there in the forefront of everything that I want to try and do um, this year to promote that mental health message. I know the, uh, uh, the neon sign is in mind jersey. Um, we've got a, a clothing line, we've got t-shirts and hoodies. So you might see a lot more of the IGYE message around town. Um, we're we're going to look at, see what we, how we can um, enhance it this year. Fantastic. You know, I've, I've had many people reach out to various um, mediums that have seen my journey and that have, as I s said before about like, you know, turning a mirror onto people. Um, they start reflecting and start having a look at their own drinking habits and some people have reached out I've met them for teas and coffees and just um, just talk honestly and openly about my, my journey and how I started it and final uh, message to anyone who's thinking about starting their sober journey and, and perhaps hesitant yeah if you're thinking about starting it just don't think about it just do it no one can tell you to do it but you need to want to do it yourself that was Dan Leo also known as Jersey Sober Walker For other news, radio and more, please check out bailiwickexpress.com or our sister publication, The Jersey Evening Post. But for now, from the Bailiwick Express team, thanks for listening. More next week.